know, a device that's connected through a wireless uh, method. I saw a real interesting video about a, a father who was trying to get his children involved in programming and set up uh, the Raspberry Pi with a little program that would allow them to remote control a little car, you know. So you, you send the signal to turn right, turn left, move forward, you know, backward, that type of thing, through some real simple controls through the Raspberry Pi. And then basically it's setting up, I think there's a programming language called Scratch. Scratch is like a programming language for small children that they can learn how to very easily do, you know, various commands and things in the programming language. So allow them to remote control this car, and uh, so it was kind of exciting for them to, to be able to do that. Very cheaply, you know, all, all very simple types of things. Now, other devices out there besides the Raspberry Pi, you know, hearsay and all that stuff, but um, there's another device, um, and, well, there's a couple devices that we could mention, but, you know, some of them are, are more of a, like just electronics type of uh, devices, and others are more toward the, the programming and that type of thing. So um, we have other choices out there besides Raspberry Pi, uh, and I'm, I'm sure we could talk about that if anybody's you know interested in more. Actually, that. I want to say one thing real quick. Um, I said I didn't have any ROMs on here. Actually, I looked on my downloads. I do. I have quite a few. I have uh, OpenELEC, which is the home theater system. Uh, I have Rasplex, which if, if you've heard of uh, the Plex uh, media server, it's like a, a front end. It's we. It's home theater kind of thing for, but you have to be running the server also. So if you're not running that, then it doesn't make sense to have it. Um, and then I have the <coughs> Noobs, which has Arch, uh, OpenELEC, Pydora, which is Fedora for the Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspbian, uh, RasBMC, which is the XBMC with uh, um, Debian, and one called Risk OS. I, I don't know anything about Risk OS. Uh, so if you're interested, if you have a flash drive you want to put on there, I can do it for you. So the the run of RAS, RAS Plex, you have to uh, be running like RAS being set it up as a server and then install. Well, there's a the there's the Plex server that you run, and that would be on a separate computer. Uh, usually, oh, oh. you want something like a quad core computer or, or dual core or better running yeah, yeah. Um, and it, what's really cool is that it will uh, re-encode and stream over the internet if you have it set up right um, you can you can use like I have it on my phone the, the app on my phone and it works with the Google um, Chromecast so I'll bring up the movie I want to watch on my phone and then say cast it to my TV and then it's playing on my TV um, or I can bring it up like the website on my computer and start watching the movie. Uh, it's it's a really cool setup. It's it's not open source, so if you're strictly into open source, then it won't work for you. But uh, otherwise, I think it works great. They have uh, they have the player for a, a bunch of little devices. Um, the uh, oh, I can't think of names right now. Isn't that funny how the brain yeah, just don't work? Oh, yeah. Who has it? Um, Samsung. A lot of the Samsung smart devices, you can get the app for it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I got a Roku. Okay, yeah, then you can get the app for Roku. Yeah. I just like, so I found my other little, you know, like I said, this one was a, you know, a small one. This is a 6,600 milliamp. It was like $30 at uh, uh, Micro Center. So, um, lots of options there. Uh, you were talking about all kinds of interesting other things. I was just thinking another one was like uh, remote control, of, like helicopters and things like that. Um, you get into a thing where you can set a pattern to the helicopter and it will go through a certain thing. Then you could, you know, do things where they, they communicate together and, and, you know, real interesting stuff like that. So this became, uh, I don't know if you guys know the history of Raspberry Pis, where what was about three years ago they first came out with it. And it was really strictly the hacker community, you know, people hacking hardware and want to get something going. And it was so low powered that it was really single use kind of things. It wasn't a general use desktop. Um, even though you could load a desktop on it, it really um, didn't work all that great. The latest version running, which much faster processors like these two guys have, um, it has the, a quad core processor with uh, a gig of RAM 
you can easily run a desktop on that. Um, it's not quite what your your uh, regular desktop would run, but you could surf the web, you know, and, and it, you could Velcro that back to a monitor and stick it in your in your kitchen and you know do just about anything right there. You're not going to be editing videos and, and audio on it, but you can surf the web easily and check your email and yeah. When I was doing a little research, because <coughs> I knew basically nothing about this before I got here, and I was doing a little search online, and it looks like there's some, like the Intel Galileo and Intel Edison are kind of competitors, I guess, if you will. Is there a difference really in that, or is it just kind of open source, Raspberry Pi versus closed source? Well, Intel? so you, you missed the mug meeting that took place on Tuesday, okay. and there was a guy there who was involved in, what's the name of that? Uh, the other device that isn't the Raspberry Pi, it's very Adreno? similar. Adreno? 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 No, the Beaglebone. Beaglebone, yes. Yeah. So Arduino's a, like a device that is mostly for like electronics and stuff like that. The Beaglebone is like the Raspberry Pi in that you run an entire you know, suite of software on it. So it's you know, a very smart type of thing. And so they, you know, this guy claimed that the Beaglebone was there first and had come up with this idea of eliminating the keyboard and the, and the display it you know so you have a laptop basically it doesn't have those encumberments you can then you know have a, a much more flexible environment so beagle bone uh, that's also available at uh, uh, the micro center for like fifty dollars get the beagle bone black you're writing down this stuff uh, that's the one that's the newest and best out there if you get the other ones they're they're lower power or they're specialized interest and things like that so for 50 bucks you basically get something but the beagle bone is open hardware other than the CPU, the CPU. So the story on that, the history on that, story of this guy was that basically uh, they worked for a large uh, chip manufacturer, and the chip manufacturer said, "Okay, here, this sounds like a good idea. Here's thirty-five thousand dollars. Make us a thousand, and then they just took off from there. Um, so the BeagleBone is a little bit different from the Raspberry Pi, and that, like the SD card, doesn't stick out the side from what he's saying. So they did a little bit to make it, you know, uh, work a little better in some ways." Um, so, you know, you take a look at these two things and, you know, they're covering somewhat the same area, but they each have their own strengths. And, um, and, and so the Arduino is, you know, has a lot of control, you know, little little pins on it for doing controls of things. Uh, and it's also a cheap solution. And, uh, you know, there's, again, whatever you're interested in. I mean, I've seen people spend quite a bit of time and money just making lights blink and have fun like that, you know. Uh, some of us are into more of the programming or the you know, developments type of stuff. So um, one of oh, you know that made me think of another project. Have you heard of Ambilight? Um, some of the newer, or actually not fairly new anymore, but they have the where it puts backlighting onto the wall when you're watching a movie. So when there's an explosion and it goes red and white all over, then it actually expands up onto your wall. <laughs> and whenever it's like a dark, starry night, then you'll see like little, little glares around the edge of your TV, you know, and all sorts of things. It puts out the light that's along the edge of the TV. Well, I've never heard of that one. Um, it sounds cool. I mean, yeah, what I think would be cool, cool is now you start writing um, the, the people who put together movies and stuff know about that and start building them for that purpose. You right. Know? Well, and there's actually a project where you can take and build that onto any TV that you already have. So the I don't know what the proprietary the one that's built onto the TV I can't remember what it's called, but the open source version is Ambilight, and so you buy the strip of LED lighting, and um, and then you can uh, put it hook it up to your Raspberry Pi, and run at open elect, and it just it, it, there's one more program you have to install along with it, and then you're just watching the movie and it just starts doing it, and you run the movie off of your Raspberry Pi. It's really cool. It's not cheap. I want to say it's 150, almost 200 dollars to to build it yourself, because that that uh, lighting, um, you know, it, it does the three color LED. So or so it does most of the the range of colors, and you have to have them. They're like one or two inches apart. So you, around like a 50 inch TV is you're going to have you know 100 or so. On there, so it, it's not cheap, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I get started with like uh, the, the carpet, the remote control carpet. So I got a few around the house, and I'm gonna take them and turn in yeah. the remote control. So let me suggest another club, I3 Detroit. I 
three Detroit dot org, I think it is. is it org or com? I'm not sure. Or anyway, org, okay. Uh, they are into all kinds of yeah, that's that's do yourself do it yourself stuff. The hacker community. It's a hacker, hacker space. Okay. Um, they are subscription subscription based though, right? Yeah, so it's like, like fifty bucks a month or something like that and you become a club member and uh, gives you access to the so hackerspace is, is kind of like what we do, but hardware. Where you actually, they have the lathes and they have the saws and they have everything there. And you can go in there and they'll teach you a class on how to use the equipment and the different projects. And then you can actually sit down and use the lathe and you don't have to buy one yourself. There's one here in Dearborn, uh, Techspace. Tech, tech shop dot tech shop. W-S. Tech Not. shop, T-E-C-H-S-H-O-P dot W-S. And it's more expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a professional level where if you're going to be doing fabricating for actual... Thing, you click com, dot com. Dot com. And if they have a million dollars worth of equipment. Yeah. So, and it's, you know, you That's have to... It's actually, what, just a mile or two from here? Yeah, so it's uh, Rotunda yeah. and Southfield. Yeah. It's, uh, remember the, if you know where the uh, Detroit Lions practice field is, it's like in the shadow of that building. So it's real close. Um... So I, I wanted to ask if there's other people who have things they want to show us. Has anybody done an open electrical? Not yet. Mm -hmm. While wow, wow, he's setting that up, um, I just wanted to say, so I'm, I'm kind of new to Linux. Okay. And, and well, welcome. We, we, we fully embrace and engage with you. So please <laughs> you know, um, make use of us somehow. One of the things I was going to say is the, the term hacker. Normally, when I hear it, it's in a negative light, but you know, here it's speaking here, it's more in the positive, right? Yeah, right. So, the hackers know that hackers are good, crackers are bad, <laughs> but I don't know if that's true. I mean, yes, so, it is. Uh, hacker was coined by the media. Anybody that wants to open something up, find out how it works, modify it, find out if it can be modified, they're technically a hacker. Um, people that, and you might have heard different terms, they have the white hat hacker, the blue hat hacker, and the black hat. Black hat is anybody who hacks into a company.